welcome welcome i hope you're having a wonderful day this video is going to be my recent reads at the beginning of the year i said i wasn't going to do kind of like monthly tbrs um and as someone put <laughs> in the comment section of that video um, i've kind of taken a move back towards kind of mood reading which has been great i'm very much enjoying it it had le has led to me kind of reading six books all at once I think is my story graph because I'm just picking up as and when I feel like it um but it's been super fun it's always fun for a bit of a change every now and then um but that does mean I'm also not going to do kind of monthly wrap-ups I'm just going to do general kind of overviews as and when I feel like them um and so this is one of them I'm just going to go through the books that I have finished recently the books I'm currently reading and I don't know, anything else that happens to pop into my head <laughs> during, during uh, these discussions. So looking at the books that I have finished recently, I'm going to start with Cold Days by Jim Butcher. Um, just this ongoing saga of me really enjoying the Harry Jason series. Um, really, really like Cold Days. It was kind of back into the action-packedness of the recent books, but wasn't too OTT. I think um, there was a peak here where the Harrison series just escalated and escalated and escalated and got a bit crazy I think was was it changes where it was just like oh my god wow how can this get any bigger and then it's done a recent with Ghost Story following that it kind of went a recent dip which I really love Ghost Story I thought it was really really good and here with Cold Days it's picking back up into the kind of middle action ground which I really enjoy basically Harrison is working for Mab and has been asked to kill an immortal and I guess stop an island from blowing up <laughs> so there's a few things going on here the stakes are big massive he's still getting pulled into these kind of world changing events um but it wasn't so on the edge as it had been with um the last arc where you know through changes and everything else desperately trying not to give away spoilers <laughs> in these overviews in case people haven't read them because they're quite big spoilers um so yeah anyway loving cold days i'm still listening to them on audible I still think they're great. We'll pick up the next one very, very soon. So the next book that I have recently finished is Lie or Die by A.G. A.J. Clack. Um, I always sent this as an ARC copy. It's actually out this month. This month? Next month in March. Um, I had a lot of fun with this book. I don't read a lot of thrillers, um, but this was very, very enjoyable. This is kind of like a YA thriller as well. Um, and honestly was just an absolute romp really really enjoyed it was quite surprised with it actually about how much i how much i enjoyed it so the premise for this book is that um cast the main protagonist is kind of i think about 17 is tricked essentially into going on a um reality tv show called lie or die and she's tricked by her best friend i think it's thea um and her other friend lewis i think is, is drawn in but isn't directly in the show so for this show it's a setup of there'll be 10 strangers in a house and they're playing a game called lie or die where there's two agents out of the 10 players so two agents eight are players and the agents have to kind of secretly kill the players um before the players find out and then they get to vote every day on who they think is an agent and then kick them out of the house so it's kind of among us vibes or wink murder i guess if you played that as a kid um but obviously the twist in here and it's given away in the back of the book is that um people actually start dying and um so after the 10 strangers you then have to work out who the murderer is and they're trapped in this house in this re reality tv show it sounds super cheesy and it is but it was also as i said a lot of fun the characters are great fun there's taylor swift references throughout really good details that make the set, set and kind of set up feel real like it's based on something and i believe the author actually worked in tv so just the references and how it's written are really well set up it also is really good at kind of like this is going to sound really weird but staying in its lane it doesn't it doesn't go crazy it doesn't escalate to kind of apart from the premise being obviously that actual people are murdering people on a reality tv show it doesn't go doesn't escalate so crazy that it's completely unbelievable like it stays in its lane of its premise of the idea and just sits super well in it it um just was an absolute page turn for me i think i picked it up because i found this like a little bit different and read it within two days it was just brilliant it's just funny there's a little bit of like 
not romance but flirtation between the characters um there's this like back and forth of uh Cass and her best friend Thea and they're kind of um are they betraying each other are they not um yeah just done really well super um super super fun and would highly recommend it if you kind of want a fast-paced entertaining um YA thriller so oddly the next book I finished recently actually was another thriller this is kind of on the different end of the thriller vibe I think that was kind of like a fun YA thriller this is more of a psychological murder thriller i guess they're both murders um anyway this one's by, this one is done by like crouch and was republished last year i think around july um took me a while to pick up but really really enjoyed it again so in this one the premise is that in the 1800s i think there's a remote mining village and all the occupants of that village go missing and it's kind of an unsolved mystery to this day and then i think it's in 2019 Abigail I want to say a journalist and her historian father take a expedition out to this kind of mining town to kind of do a little bit more of investigation uh, to kind of find out what happened and see if they can solve the mystery so this is told in two time points you're kind of following um the old time town and kind of finding out the truth about what happened as you're following uh the kind of story of the occupants and what they're up to at that time i think it's over christmas and then you're also exploring the present and this expedition to the town with her father and then slowly finding out that there's a little bit more to this expedition and the secrets behind it it's got a really explosive opening um the first few chapters are really really good really get you hooked in and it kind of does follow through it does kind of um obviously as you get more into it and find out a bit more about what the mystery is there's always a bit kind of like of a, of a lull but um but yeah interesting ending and really fun really fast-paced kind of psychological kind of very blake crouch um <laughs> and um uh, really good highly recommend this as well so i've done really well with thrillers at the beginning of this year um very enjoyable found two that i would highly recommend if you're into thrillers so moving on to the books that i've kind of started but have not finished yet the first one would be the magician this is one of my um 12 essential books that i have to get to this year this is the first one i've actually picked up off of that list um and i'll link that video um down below if you're interested in what the 12 are i'm really enjoying this um I think I already knew that I enjoy his writing style, but yeah, I can't believe it's taken me this long to pick the book, pick the book up. It's just a really gripping read, and it's like about being in an epic fantasy tale that you can just get yourself lost in. So yeah, 50% way through that, and we'll be hopefully getting through the rest of it quite soon. The next one is I am jumping back into my Harry Bosch love, so um, by Michael Connolly, obviously. Um, I'm not sure I've jumped into the right book because I picked up The Reversal also on Audible and this is kind of a crossover with Mickey Haller from The Lincoln Lawyer where Mickey Haller has been asked by the LA County District whatever to actually be a prosecutor for them in a case where a man was convicted of being a child killer and spent 25 years in prison and then was freed from DNA by using DNA evidence. Um, however, they still think that he is guilty and want to re-prosecute him. And so um, they have called in Mickey Holler to be the prosecution for them. And then Harry Roche is brought in to be the lead investigative detective for him. Leaning into um, DNA evidence and how that can fit a case and right and wrong convictions. I said I wasn't sure if I jumped back in at the right point because I'm not actually sure if I'm reading the next consecutive like Harry Bosch book to where I left off um, but I don't think it completely matters um, and it's quite nice to read a crossover book to be honest I haven't read much of the Lincoln Lawyer ones so it's quite fun to get a little bit more about the Mickey Haller ones one of the other books I've got ongoing at the moment is Grand Conspiracy by Jenny Wirtz still really enjoying this um, we are still reading it or having a catch up every few chapters I think we're on um, 9 to 12 I'm not sure I've, I'm up to date with the chapters anyway <laughs> so much has happened in the last few chapters I cannot wait to continue with the group read and catch up with the guys on this and I think the next few chapters will actually be finished with this book which is crazy I cannot believe we'll be finished with book five that's come around way too fast um so yeah again still enjoying this series still enjoying Janie Wirtz writing she's a fantastic author 
My other ongoing read at the moment, which I literally just picked up this morning, would be Alien Clay by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I really want to um, get through this. It's an ARC copy and it comes out later this, um, later this month. I keep thinking it's March already. Later in March. So I really want to get um, ahead of the curve and see if I can um, get a review out before the publication date. Um, so I've read, I think, about, I don't know, 50 pages of this and I'm really, really loving it so far. Basically about a political dissident who's sent off to a colony planet and they discover um, alien life on this planet where there has been no alien interaction with humanity yet. Uh, first 50 pages are really good. His writing is really good. There's a little bit of humour. Um, so yeah. Looking forward to the rest of that. I think this is going to be quite a quick read. From how fast I'm getting through it at the moment, I think that's going to be a very quick read. So moving on from books, other things I did want to mention is I am actually doing a few book events next month in March, which is, well, I think it's quite exciting. I'm quite excited to go to them. First one being the book launch for Lie or Die. It is in a Waterstones, the exact Waterstones, um, evades me, I'll put it down below in the comment book, it's one of the water stains in London um, and I think it's going to be quite entertaining. So I do get the chance to meet the author at all, which may not happen, uh, but it would be good fun if it did. Um, I will have a few questions about some of the ideas in this book um, and um, the writing process of it, as I said, it was uh, very enjoyable, so I, I do have a few questions. And the other one which I'm quite excited about is um, there's going to be a booktube meetup, I think on the 2nd of March? Um, which we did do last summer. So it's going to be an awful lot of fun um, meeting up with some of the YouTubers that were there last year. It's, um, yeah, it was it was just really nice. It was nice meeting everyone and having some bookish conversations. And this year they're going to do, a, we're going to do a bookshop tour of around kind of um, Shoreditch and Hackney, which is a slightly different area than we did before. So a whole new selection of bookshops um, and then lunch afterwards. I did not vlog or blog or anything or take many pictures last year because I think I was just kind of like overwhelmed with meeting that many people and seeing people who have anything on the screen before. Um, but I think this time, because I'm going to know that I have already met some of them, I might hopefully try and do a little bit of filming, um, potentially. Maybe some photos at least. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I've got that on the second. So I'm quite excited about that, looking forward to that a lot. My only other thing would be that I'm enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 an awful lot and I'm hopefully spending some time on that. It's one of those things where you like gaming and you like reading of um, when you get some spare time, kind of which hobby to go for. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 is taking a lot of my time recently, which uh, could be could be used for reading instead. But we'll have to see how I feel going forward. Anyway, enough of me rambling about books. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and I will see you in the next video.